Hi, I'm Paul. Welcome to Make Monday. This week we're going to continue on the, uh, the uh, instruction on the Boy Scout welding merit badge. Uh, last week we talked about the steps necessary as far as the setup of the machine, the safety requirements, uh, things that you had to do with the, to, you know, to prepare for this test and to prepare the machine for the test. Now, uh, I think last week I also mentioned that, you know, obviously we're going to, this is MIG Monday, so we're going to do a MIG welding process uh, because that's the, kind of the point of our show. But for this merit badge, you, the, the scout can choose any welding process that he chooses that, that he would prefer to use. But uh, hopefully you're going to use the MIG welding process and we're going to continue on and talk about some of the welds that we need to do uh, for this test. All right? So without any further ado, let's get started with the different welds that we're going to make. All right, we're getting ready to make the first of the five required welds. And this first one is just a, it recalls you to uh, take a soapstone and just write your initial on a piece of quarter inch plate. And the thickness is required by the, by the test as all the welds are. Uh, this piece of quarter inch uh, is perfect for this little application. Uh, there's a Lincoln Electric Foundation, the James F. Lincoln Foundation uh, sells kits specifically for this test and you get them from there. Uh, you don't have to, but you know, they have all the correct sizes and thicknesses for the variety of welds that we're gonna be making uh, during the course of these five welds. Now, this is a quarter inch piece. So what I'm gonna do is, or what I've actually already done, is set this machine up to weld quarter inch material. Most of these small welders have a chart on the inside of the door that will tell you for this given wire five, wire size and gas that you're using. In our case, we're using uh, C25. And uh, it will give you a setting of, of wire feed speed and voltage. And that setting happens to be, because I've already set this up, 325 inches of wire feed speed and 21 inches of voltage. So I've gone ahead and set that up. Uh, so that's ready to go. Uh, of course, you're gonna have to make sure your ground clamp is attached to either your work table that you're working on, if, assuming it's conductive and can, you, know, you can lay your work on there and weld, or right to your work if you don't have a conductive uh, table. Uh, the gas I'm using, uh, typically I'm gonna use about, I, I usually set it for about 30 CHF, 30 cubic feet per hour. And uh, that seems to work well for me. That helps me overcome any little variations of drafts that I might have in my, in my shop while I'm doing some work. So all that being said, uh, it's time to make a weld. Let's do it. Okay, so that was the initial on a piece of plate. The next step is to take another piece of plate, actually the same, same size piece, quarter inch thick, so I'm gonna leave my settings all the same. And the, the uh, application this time is just to make a series of beads across the plate, one after the other, all the way down the plate until the whole plate is covered with weld bead. So that's, uh, you know, that, that's the uh, extent of, this, of the next test that we're gonna do. So. Let's get started on that one.
the point of this exercise is just to get used to laying bead next to bead next to bead and being able to follow in a straight line. So that's what the whole side by side by side is, okay? Our next weld is a butt weld. And I'm just gonna take, this happens to be 10 gauge, so I've set my machine for 10 gauge based on the uh, criteria they give you in the door here. So I'm using 232 inches per minute of wire feed speed and 19 inch or 19 volts as a, as a voltage setting. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is tack the, because I've got two different pieces, I've gotta join them somehow. And of course this is gonna be the butt weld. So what I'm gonna do is put a tack weld on each end and this, when, I'm, when you watch me tack this up, what you're gonna notice, uh, I tack each end, and actually I'm gonna tie and tack it one on one side, one on the other side. And there's a reason for that, and that's distortion. Uh, if I just tack one side, as the material, as the weld cools, it's gonna to tend to pull the pieces apart, and so my, my, it's not, not just dramatic, I'm doing this just for visual, but it's gonna pull it apart like that. It's gonna have a, a space that grows. But if I tack it on both sides, it'll hold it together like it's supposed to. It, both ends, not both sides. If I only tack it on, two si on the same side, as that weld metal cools, it's gonna to tend to cause it to butterfly up like this. So if I do a tack on one side and a tack on the other side, that'll keep it in a straight position. So that's something you'll, uh, you'll learn about that as you progress with your welding. Uh, you'll see where distortion can be an issue and you gotta kind of plan ahead for that. So, all right, let's, let's make this weld. All right, so that's our butt weld. Now this is the side I did first, uh, and you notice that the, the bead is a little bit humpy. I mean, it could be a little flatter, uh, but it, you know, it's humpy or ropey, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the other side now, I flipped it over, and if you kind of ignore my little wiggle here because I kind of messed up following the joint, but you'll notice that the, the weld bead looks a lot better. It's a lot flatter, and the reason for that is even though the settings I used on both sides are the same, being that this is a relatively thin piece of material, being 10 gauge, uh, it was pretty hot when I made this weld. So there was more heat there and that allowed the weld to spread out more. So you can kind of put that in your memory banks that if you do have a weld that's a little on the humpy side or ropey side, uh, uh, adding a little more heat by adding a little more wire feed speed or a little more voltage couldn't help spread that out so that you have a nicer looking bead. Just something to kind of think about for the future welds, all right? Okay, so that's the butt weld. We'll move on to some of the other welds that we gotta make now. Okay, the next weld is gonna be a fillet weld, or a T-joint, and we're gonna, that's like this, and we're gonna just put a weld right along the line and on both sides. Now, same thing holds true when you're tacking up. You wanna do a tack on one side and a tack on the other side because if you tack on both sides, it's gonna lean over very much like that. Okay, maybe not that to that degree, but you're gonna get some some distortion. So by, by kind of alternating your tacks, you'll keep it nice and straight. Now, if you recall on the butt weld that we did, the one bead was a lot flatter than the other bead because the work was hotter. You're gonna encounter the same thing here. You're gonna make a fillet weld down here and then you're gonna make one on the other side. Uh, so it's gonna be much hotter going down on your second pass. So one of the things you can do if you've got a nice shaped bead on your first one, it's nice and flat and, and washed in nicely. Uh, you might want to maybe even reduce your procedures a little bit, a little less voltage, a little bit less wire feed speed, so it's not quite so hot to keep the weld looking nice. Uh, and the other thing, I guess, what I should mention too in this is, you know, I mentioned that a lot of these small welding machines have a chart inside. It kind of tells you, all right, this is 10 gauge, so use this this wire feed speed and this voltage if you're using this gas and wire size. 
That's, that's a pretty handy deal, but always keep in mind, that's a reference. There's no, there's no welding police that come around and say, hey, you know, you're off the procedure a little bit. You know, use what you need to do to get a nice weld. Uh, you're always gonna be looking for that nice crackling, frying sound uh, when you're short arc welding. And sometimes that might require a little bit of change here or there. So uh, just bear that in mind that you're not locked into any one procedure. You just, that's a general guide, okay? All right, so let's make this weld and we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes, all right? All right, one of the other things to watch for on a fillet weld uh, is the leg length. Now, in this case, we've got the two pieces are the same thickness of metal. So typically what we're going to want is the same amount of weld metal on the top plate and the same amount of weld metal or on the bottom plate, or what they call the leg, each way, each direction from the joint is, is the leg. And you want to have the legs be equidistant. Now, the only time that would be different is if I'm welding a, a thin piece on a, on a real thick piece, uh, then you, you don't have to follow that rule. In fact, it's not necessarily a good idea to follow that rule. So, you, you, but in equal, equal size plates, you're gonna wanna have equal leg lengths. And then the other thing you're gonna want is to have a kind of a flat surface, okay? A flat weld face, as they call it. Uh, if, you, if you have it, uh, you know, cosmetically sometimes, and it depends on strength, but in general, if you have a, what they call a concave weld that's running like this, uh, that can be a point of weakness. It is, depending on what the strength you need, it isn't necessarily a bad thing, but bear in mind when you have a concave shape like this, when the meld, weld metal shrinks, you could tend to get cracks in the, in the bottom of that concave shape. So typically you're gonna want a flat side, a flat face, or even a slightly rounded face, because then when you when the melt, yeah, it's hard to talk sometimes. When the weld metal shrinks, it's kind of a compression kind of a thing rather than a stress type of a, of a situation. So that's something to keep in mind too uh, you know, when you're making a fillet weld. All right, we'll move on now to the next weld. All right. The last weld for the Barrett badge test is a lap weld. A lap weld is a weld that's situated like this. You have a flat plate and, a, and another plate sitting on top of it or, or lapping over it, hence the name lap weld. To make this weld correctly, you do the same thing as a fillet, essentially, is you point the, you point the uh, wire right into the joint and you have a slight push angle on it. And what's gonna happen here is you're gonna meld away some of this top edge and the top edge, the top plate where you meld away, that will become part of the face of the weld, all right? So that's, it's, it's not a hard weld to make. You just have to kind of watch uh, directionally where you're going and how far you're cutting into the top plate, all right? So we'll take a shot at making one of these and that'll be done with the test and hopefully uh, everything will be all right and you'll uh, be on your way to your merit badge. Okay, so these are the five welds required for the merit badge. You have the, the initial, the full plate, the butt weld, the fillet weld, and the lap weld. Uh, once you've successfully done that, uh, that's, that's the, essentially the end of the welding part of the, of the welding merit badge. Uh, if you have any questions about the, anything else about the, welding ba or the merit badge, uh, please feel free to contact us on the uh, weld.com forum. So until next time then, Let's see you on Big Monday. Well, if you learned something today or like what you saw, please feel free to subscribe and keep an eye out for new episodes every Big Monday.